would you want to know how to build profitable high ticket coaching business in today's video i'm going to break it down to you the good the bad the ugly how i built my coaching business and not just that but also what is required what are the pre-requirements for you to build your successful business whether you're a coach whether you're a service provider and whether or not you're thinking about high ticket service this episode is for you and we are starting right now so Welcome to Heart and Profit Podcast, a place where purpose-driven entrepreneurs can get practical advice on how to build high-ticket businesses in 20 minutes or less. This is your host, Eugene Berezin, former clinical psychologist, sign language interpreter, software engineer, and your business mentor and a coach. Grab your favorite drink, relax, and get ready for practical and transformational advice for your business. So, episode number one. Welcome. Uh, let's in today's episode, let's break it down what it really takes to build your profitable business. Because there's a lot of noise in social media, right? Like, oh, I will help you to build business in 90 days. I will help you to build business in six months. And after a year working with us, you will have like, I don't know, like such and such business. But what does it really take to build your business and how make it profitable how to recognize the fluff and not fluff in the in the content around you fluff inside of you because we often as entrepreneurs we have first of all we have two like we have two syndromes like syndrome number one is syndrome of shiny objects we will buy overly expensive tech that we will never use I don't know, like share with me anywhere. I don't know if you can share with me in the comments. If you're watching this live stream, well, not live stream, but episode on YouTube, share with me in the comments if it is you. When you started your business, you bought a website, you spent a bunch of money on tech that you don't even using right now. Share with me like, hey, like judgment free zone. I have done it for sure. I've done it for sure. So when I started my business, the first thing that I did is like bought a website and now I have a problem. Uh, I don't want to use that domain anymore because I changed my domain and like, I like, okay, now what do I do with that? But okay, like, let's, let's break it down what it really requires. And, uh, and, I think a better way for me to show you how to build your successful coaching high ticket business that is profitable, that brings you clients, is actually show you the example. And to show you the example effectively, let me tell you a story and let me start from the beginning where I was born and how I got here. Everything that I'm about to share with you has everything to do with your business because our consciousness our identity forms before the age of seven and at the age of seven we start like we our we we, we start understanding the word based on what other people told like told us right we are stop believing in our abilities in a way where we start we stop believing and processing the word the world how other people are teaching us this is why it is important for me to like really show you my upbringing where i'm coming from because you might recognize you in the story 
So I was born um, in Moscow, Russia, and my family was not rich. My mom uh, is a military woman. She is retired right now, um, and I grew up without father. I remember, well, I remember my father. He was with me probably for the first like three years, and then um, they decided to separate, uh, and uh, he just went away. And after that, I also was born with a lot of health problems. And one of the problems that I had was cleft palate. So what does it mean? So imagine like your mouth, right? Inside of your mouth, there's a roof of your mouth that separates your nasal cavity and your, um, your nasal cavity and your oral cavity. So imagine your oral cavity, your nasal cavity as the same space. It's one big cavity, right? So, and why I'm telling you that, because that disorder, that like birth defect affects person's ability to speak. So when I was born, nobody could understand what I was saying, but my family, but my mom, but my parents. And that was like that was one of the most traumatic experiences for me because uh, after my second surgery, my teacher told me like you will never be a public speaker, you will never like you you will never do a presentation publicly effectively. So other people will hear you and resonate with you because you had a surgery, because you have certain accent, because you have certain way of speaking. Um, but spoiler alert, I speak five languages and I am excellent at public speaking. So that, that limitation, again, why, everything, everything that I'm telling you right now has everything to do with your business because some of you think that you're not good at speaking. That video is not for you. That podcasting is not for you. That showing up showing up and talking about business is not for you. Listen, if I was able to show up, show out, learn five languages after massive complicated two surgeries and I'm like I have a podcast. This is in fact this is my second podcast. So do you. You can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. So after that, um, I, uh, I went to school and, uh, um, in fact, before starting my high ticket coaching business, I had three businesses and I missed it and I missed it in one of my live streams. I actually was talking about how my identity got in a way because, uh, one thing that is important for you to understand if you want to build your profitable coaching business, if you want to build profitable business in general, is your identity. You have to let go of employee mindset. You have to let go of the idea how much money I'm making every month. Because if you tie your income, if you tie your prosperity, your abundance to, uh, to time, you will always have a limited amount of money. Time is not money. And money is not time. Wealth is not money. Wealth is your ability to create value. So other people want that. In, in fact, if you go in, into entrepreneurship... And you're focusing on the money and the money is your main motivator. It's going to be a really tough journey because like it's going to be, it's going to be tough to like, I, you're going to be attached to like period of time period, and, and, and the amount of money, like period. You will be beating yourself down. Like, okay. Like it's been a month and I haven't made anything. What am I even doing? Why even, I'm even doing that? And this is a good question. Why are you even doing that? So your identity. So I went again. Um, I went after after graduating high school. And by the way, 
I was not a good student in high school. Elementary school, middle school, high school, I was not a good student in high school. I did not have good grades. But also, like, little did I know I had ADHD and I have ADHD. Did not know. And I, but it's not like I was not capable of learning. I was not interested because, like, the, the truth for me, uh, I have to be interested in what other people are saying for me to take it seriously and to learn it. Math was not one of them. Math was not one of them. And I, 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 it, it was absolutely terrible. So when I graduated, when I was graduating, one of my teachers said, like, Eugene, you will never get in college. You will never get in college. Again, why has it, well, what does it, anything to do with your business? Everything. Because there will be people who will tell you that you are, you won't make it. You like there's something lacking. There's something wrong with you. Like don't listen to those people. I have multiple teachers told me not to go to college. Just go and get a job. Just go and settle for a labor job, and hopefully I will be able to provide for myself. I say no. I said no. I said fuck that. This is not my life. This is not my reality. I do not subscribe to that. I applied for college, didn't get in. I applied for another program. And in fact, I was lucky because another program was actually a combination for working professionals. And at that time, mind you, when I graduated high school, I already had my first career. I was a sign language interpreter. So uh, with that, I was like, okay, how do I connect what I'm doing right now as a sign language interpreter? And it was half freelancing, half um, W-2 or, or half employment. Again, miss my business as a freelance sign language interpreter because of my identity. I thought that I needed to have nine to five job to be successful, that I believed, I believe in my, that in my identity back then that I wouldn't be able to make a profitable business offering freelance sign language interpreting. So I went to school uh, and I started like I, what I knew, what I knew, what I knew that I needed to build my acumen. I needed to build my portfolio. I needed to build my experience. So what did I do? I started my private practice and it was very much similar to coaching. I actually got invited for corporate coaching, for corporate communication and confidence coaching um, by one of the startups in Moscow. My first year in college, I'm like, oh, like you're a psychology student, like you're good at communication. I like your, I like your, um, I like your personality. I also early on, I invested in myself heavily. I'm in coaching program right now. I was in coaching and therapy and whatever like additional education programs back then. I would always invest in myself. So that person said, like you always investing in yourself come do corporate training, corporate coaching for us on how to get along better. Run your diagnostics and tell me what am I doing wrong because I can put my team together. And that was my first executive coaching session I ever done. Missed it. Because why? Say it with me. Identity. Identity. I had coaching business back then. I could have charged that. I will try not to swear on my podcast. I could charge that motherfucker a lot of money, okay? And I didn't because of my identity, because I missed that. Because I missed that. How many of you miss per your perfect opportunity to sell your high ticket offer right there and then but your identity your imposter syndrome got in the way let me know in the comments if you're watching it on youtube let me know judgment free zone let me know all right it's not it it's not it um 
I missed my coaching business back then, 100%, because identity, right? I graduated with, with honors. Again, teachers said, like, Eugene, you, college? No, Eugene, you're not smart. And in fact, I was so passionate about biology. Like, I wanted to go to nursing school, okay? And I wanted to be a doctor. And medicine is my passion. This is why, like, oh, like, oral cavity, nasal cavity, all kinds of cavities. Like, I know them all. And in fact, as a part of my training, we had really extensive medical training, which I loved, absolutely. But my biology teacher said, like, Eugene, you will never be a doctor. You will never be a nurse. You will never be a psychologist. You will never be a professional because your biology knowledge sucks. And um, in Russia, I, I, like when you graduate high school or middle, like when you graduate middle school, you can select an exam by your choice. Um, and I selected biology. And she said, do not do biology because you don't know nothing. And I said to her, like, well, we're going to see about that. Because I, I know biology really well. I'm confident in my knowledge that I can, I, I can kill it 100%. She was not happy about it. Like, uh, I, got, I got A on my exam. Graduate with honors. Graduate with honors. And uh, when I graduated, I realized that um, I meant for more. I wanted to move to a different country because I was different. I was gay. I was Christian. I'm still am gay and Christian. Yes. Yes and stop typing. I know it's controversial. Stop typing. Um but like here's the thing, right? Uh, when I was like when I when I was in high school I was actually expelled from high school because of my faith. I was actually expelled from high school because of my faith. I invited my friend to a church, right? And his family was not happy about it. I was, uh, I was going to a Baptist church, and his family was not about, like, was not about it. It was, it was a huge scandal in the school. And um, because of certain intricacies, right, uh, they, um, they, I was expelled, Fortunately, I was able to graduate. I was able to get in another school and get my like get my diploma, get my, get my graduation. Like everything is good, but like that was that was that was a part of my story when I was expelled because of my faith. So, and at that time, I knew like okay, I need to find a faith community that like I can understand. Like, cause I, w I always have had close relationship with God. That was a part of my, that is a part of my identity and th that, that, that is a driving factor in my business. Close relationship to God and call, like God's calling to do his work to build his kingdom. So, but also like, how do we reconcile like being gay and being Christian? And I'm not gonna get into it today because it is the whole it's the whole another episode and like I really don't have time for that. Um, but um, I realized that like I need to move to another country where I can find faith community, if not a hundred percent accepting, where I can at least have a conversation because I had a conversation with my pastor and I wasn't excommunicated. I wasn't excommunicated. It was more so like, um, okay, like, do you want to stay in church or do you want to leave church? And I was like, well, I kind of want to stay church. Uh, I want to kind of stay in church. Like, I love God. I love people. And I was a sign language interpreter. Like, well, I, like, God gave me the gift to be a sign language interpreter and be good at it, really good at it. So I would like to stay because my people need me. God, I believe, God would like to use me. God doesn't need me, but God would like to use me in the sense. So, um, yeah. And they like they like two pastors. They like one pastor like came from, uh, like a, like 
a con- countryside. Another pastor was more so like met- uh, from metropolitan area from Moscow or Moscow region. And he said, like, "Okay, you can stay. You don't have to go. We we're not gonna we're not gonna make a big deal about it." But just so you know, you gotta, you gotta, ha- you gotta, gotta make a choice. Like if you want to stay in this church, you gotta make a choice. I made a choice. So I decided to move to another country because I realized that I'm not fully welcomed as a Baptist. I'm not fully welcomed as 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 a gay Christian anywhere, right? Especially in Moscow, Russia. So. I bought a ticket to the U.S. and I got my tourist visa. Now, I had no intention to really stay here, right, for a long time. Like that was not a plan. It was like it was like I need a visa, and then I don't know what. And it's like again, like you might be wondering, like you, I. I I am losing you. Like what it has to do with my business. Sometimes you want to know it all. Like you want to have your five、uh, year plan right there and then. But sometimes you just need to know the next step. And my next step was just get a visa, get a visa, move, get a visa, move. That was the plan. So. Uh, I got my visa like fairly easily. I went to the UK. I went to the UK to study,、uh, and again、uh, at that time, like the opportunity presented itself to stay there, but identity, identity was not quite right, and I overspent my money. Like this is the first time I ran out of money. Like period. When I flew back, I landed. I had zero in my bank account because conversion rate, and、uh, like I was going out quite a bit, and I could calculate how much money I'm really spending. But I had a good time, and yes, like I was terrified because I was like I was I was、um, uh, getting on my plane, and like if they if they said I can land I can get on my plane I can get home because I have zero in my bank account right now I can't even get a taxi、um, to my house so I would have to travel on the train and like go and take a long trip back back home. So when I landed.、Uh, When I landed, I quickly realized that ability to tell my story and it has everything with your business. Ability to tell your story will make your business profitable and will make will change your entire life. I was able to tell my story. When I when I arrived here, like I found the lawyer, I told my story. I got like I I got my paperwork, and this is like this is a skill. If you think about like okay, like what storytelling has to do with my business, everything, because people, people like storytelling is a is a very old technique. How you how people process information. If you say hey, like I run a coaching program for uh, busy uh, moms, for busy tech professionals uh, to get um, you know, to get notice in tech industry with a ninety day or less.、Um, Apply to work with me. Everybody missed it. It's a whole lot of words. Don't do it. Tell a story. Tell how you were a busy professional. A busy professional, right? So, like, when I moved here, my ability to tell my story got me my paperwork. Got me my paperwork to stay here. And later on, got my、uh, I I got my green card and I got my citizenship. But it's ability to tell my story, not once, not twice, continuously. Because like when when I had a conversation with the immigration officer, I had to tell my story, very detailed story. Also, when I apply my for for my citizenship, I have to repeat my story. When I got my green card, I gotta, I gotta again repeat my story, and this is the skill that I'm bringing into entrepreneurship, telling my story. So, and、uh, also, ability to tell my story was、uh, allowed me to get back into my industry as a like、uh, in in behavioral health、um, in in the U.S. Which again, when people tell you that something is not possible for you, don't believe them. 
don't believe them because people told me like, okay, Eugene, uh, you made it. Uh, you moved to uh, to another country, but you won't make it there. Like a good thing if you if you will wash dishes there. That will be the best possible scenario, the best possible case scenario. And so, like, no, this is not my story. I'm gonna get back to my to my field, and I did, and I absolutely did. So now, business: how to start your business.、Uh, after getting back into behavioral health. Switching back to tech, and tech was not in alignment with me. Tech was not in alignment with me.、Uh, I got a divorce, right after a successful career in tech for about eight years. I got a divorce, and、uh, that divorce really shattered my world. I married the love of my life. We had it all, like the good, the bad, the ugly, like like a normal family would. And、uh, one of my values, faith, is number one. Family is number two. My business is number three in that order. Like, and th- th- this is th- this is important to me. And when my number two shattered, I didn't know who I was. Again, back to that identity piece. I didn't know who I was, and. I started remembering myself, and I like I did coaching. I want to work with people. I want to create more impact. I'm gonna start my coaching business, and I didn't know who I serve. I have five different offers. Absolutely wacky on the messaging, but I started investigating, and what I did. I invested in myself. I invested in my skill set. As soon as I like, as soon as like the first, like the first, the first step, like okay, like I need certifications. I started investing in NLP certification. I had NLP certification for Russia, like because I wanted to be a life coach, right? Because what we know about coaching, life coaching, right? Like this is something that people get into. Life coaching, so I can be a life coach. Why not? So, but then I was listening to other business mentors, and I was listening to podcasts like the one that you're listening to right now, and I realized high ticket. I need to do high ticket. I need to create bigger impact, solve higher problem, higher sophisticated problem, and deliver transformation to people that I really truly desire to make. And I create I created my high ticket coaching program for tech professionals. Well, the very first offer was iOS Accelerator course. If you don't know what iOS means, it's a developer for iPhone and iPad. So I like I know I, I know how to code. I am a software engineer, and、um, I created a program for other software engineers because this is something that I knew. This is something that like resonated with me, and、um, I I was able to sell my very first offer, my very first like to my very first client at twenty four eighty four, twenty four hundred and eighty four dollars, two thousand four hundred and eighty four. So I was beyond myself, and then what happened? I lost my corporate career. I lost my corporate job. I got laid off, and this is probably the worst thing that can happen to you as a new entrepreneur. I lost my career. I already had. I invested in in my coach, and thank God I invested in my coach because twenty thousand dollars later, I'm still here. I still run my business. I still have it. This is what helped me to overcome my challenges, get more clients, get more people. So,、um, got that. But like when I started my business, when I started diving into entrepreneurship, I like this is why like this this idea of the of the podcast heart and profit. 
uh, came to life, I had strong passion to coach and to teach and to mentor other entrepreneurs. How to sell, how to sell effectively, master high ticket sales, and I just, I just, I just, I just had a nudge for it. But I didn't want to be like every other coach who just read the book, finish a coaching program, and here I am, coach for entrepreneurs. I can coach coaches how to become coaches. I didn't want to do that.、Um, what I did instead, I start chatting with my existing clients in online consultations. When people would say that they don't want my services as a career coach, I would say, "But what do you want?" And people would start telling me, "I want to do what you do. I want to be a business owner. I want to be a coach. I want to be a mentor." And this is how I ended up with my first business client, and we converted his co with we converted his、um, low ticket one hundred and eighteen dollars course into high ticket mentorship program for software engineers who would like to start doing mobile development. The same client, with the same thing, and again, this time around. I reach out to that client and say, "Hey, like, thank you for your participation. I really appreciate you.、Um, are you like you said you're running your mentorship business?" He came to my audio event and he said, "Like,、um, I'm mentor, just like you are." I'm like, "Oh, okay, you're running mentorship program." So I told him about my、uh, private pilot program. I said, "Hey, like, I'm running pilot program. This is what it is. Like, do you want it?" And initially he said like ah、uh, no like I don't have time for that, and later on like he reached back out and say you know what I need to talk to you, let's talk, and、uh, right like you you know him you you know this client Donovan I'm probably gonna invite him、uh, later to the show, and he sold out. After that it was evident to me that I had to go to the public witness offer to mentor other entrepreneurs how to sell. Because there are two blind spots when you are building your coaching program, there you gonna have two or more than two clients. The first thing, the first thing is your offer. What people want, what transformation people want. It's not your program. It's not how many sessions. It's not one on one. It's not group. It's not course. It's not. It's not none of those things. It's what transformation you can deliver to your people. Transformation. What people want that you want to deliver. This is where congruence and alignment comes from. So this is how is like this is how I pivoted, and this is how I pivoted, and when I pivoted, like again, like I want you to, I want to break this down for you. When you are starting coaching program. It will take ninety days. I don't know what's the magic behind ninety days,、um, but you will see your first success within ninety days. And your first success within ninety days is not the end result; it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. It's for you to learn from your success because success leaves clues. It's your ability to learn from your success because success leaves clues. And、uh, if you, if I were to start out my coaching business today, this is what I would have done. I would, I would figure out who I want to serve. I would figure out what transformation they want. They want, not I want for them, but they want for them. How do I figure it out? I ask, and after I ask, I will create content around how I deliver that transformation. Call to action: book a call with me. That's it. Start going live. Start creating your community. Start creating your post. And it's not rocket science, and it's not brain surgery. You can do it. I could do it. Listen, 
If I could do it, you can do it too. But it comes with your identity. It comes with your identity. This is why, like the entire episode, I was telling you, like, all about my upbringing, what I had to overcome to land here, and it's your identity. It starts with you. It starts here, and here. And if you're listening, it starts with your head and with your heart. I gotta remind myself that people are actually listening and not watching me.、Um, but yeah, it starts here and here. So my invitation for you today is to ask yourself: Who do you need to become to start your high-ticket coaching business? Who do you need to become? Because it is available for you, it is possible for you. But this is the question about your identity. This is the question about your identity. All right, my friends.、Uh, thank you so much. I promise you that you're gonna learn a lot. That you'll learn how to do business in twenty minutes or less. We we're a little bit over, but. If you have any questions, if something resonated with you, what I want you to do, I want you to connect with me on LinkedIn, connect with me on Instagram, follow my YouTube channel. If you wanna, if you wanna watch my、uh, podcast and my live streams, it's on YouTube,、uh, available a hundred percent. And I will talk to you later. Bye, y'all. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for tuning in for this episode. Do me a solid. If we're not connected yet on socials, connect with me on LinkedIn and Instagram. Also, if you're listening to this episode and you're thinking, "Okay, this is useful. This is good. How do I work with you?" All the links on for my social media for to book a call. To follow me on YouTube, on LinkedIn, and Instagram are in the description box below for this episode. Also, share this episode with your fellow entrepreneurs, so more purpose-driven entrepreneurs will get actionable advice how to build their profitable, high-ticket businesses. Again, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you in the next episode.